Committee since its formation on March 22nd. To date, five meetings have been held, and uh, Ma Minister Malahu Ford will be speaking on the work the committee has been doing as Jamaica prepares itself to the road to republic. So I now invite Honorable Minister to come to the lectern to give her thoughts. Thank you, Roxine. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm extremely pleased to engage with the media this afternoon to provide an update to the people of Jamaica and to everyone else listening on the work of the historic Constitutional Reform Committee established to provide expert guidance and oversight to the government and people of Jamaica during the constitutional reform process that we are now in. The media are an important partner, media generally, in the work that we are doing. You are in the business of shaping opinion, you're in the business of informing the public, you're in the business of educating the public, not just entertaining, as some would say um, the media can do. And so we have taken note of the heightened interest in the media and in the public domain about the work of the Constitutional Reform Committee. We have taken note of the many issues that have arisen and on which discussions are taking place. We have taken note of some of the conclusions drawn um, based on uh, either misunderstanding or inaccurate information. And it is my hope that at the end of this press conference, you would have more information and you'd be helping to keep the focus in the right direction as we embark on this historic mission of establishing the Republic of Jamaica. The Constitutional Reform Committee was actually established on March 1, but we had our first meeting on March 22 when the Prime Minister announced the composition of the committee. Since then, as Roxine pointed out, the committee has been meeting and we have been deliberating on the matters to be put to the people for their consideration, what we call recommendations by consensus. I have said repeatedly in other fora that the work being done is being done in phases. And this first phase, phase one, is uh, focusing on the matters for which a referendum will be required. Ladies and gentlemen, this will be the first time that the people of Jamaica will vote to pass a law. The matters that will be passed by the parliament first and then approved by the people before it can become law. The constitution of Jamaica sets out the issues that would require the people to vote on for a change. And these include the process of altering the constitution itself, the effect of the constitution as the supreme law of the land, the establishment of the parliament consisting of the monarch, a senate and a house of representatives, how the senate is made up currently with 13 members were appointed on the advice of the Prime Minister and eight on the advice of the Leader of the Opposition. The other matter relates to the House of Representatives and who is qualified for membership in the House. Also general membership for both the Senate and the House. Another matter requiring the decision of the people for a change relates to the sessions of Parliament the life of parliament, extension of the parliament, and also um, general election, the appointment of senators in the aftermath of general elections, 
where the executive authority of Jamaica is vested and uh, matters relating to the provisions of the Jamaica Independence Act. These are specific and defined matters that the Constitution itself says would require the approval of the people before any change to the existing provisions can become law. And these are the matters we are focusing on in phase one. Having regard to what I have seen reported in the media and the issues under discussion, I think it's important to tell you how the committee works. Decisions are made by consensus. Every issue to be discussed is discussed widely, taking into account views in the public domain, taking into account um, experience at the table, and also where we would like to go. Bear in mind that we are not starting the reform work from scratch, but we're actually building on the body of work previously done by the Constitutional Reform Committee and the Joint Select Committee on Constitutional and Electoral Reform, work done some decades ago. Having regard to the passage of time, since the recommendations were made to the Parliament, and now when we are looking to implement them, we have been revising them to see what new perspectives need to be taken into account, um, what changes have taken place in the society to ensure that um, we are up to date with the thinking. So the way the committee works is that it deliberates on the issues and then by consensus, it arrives at a position that it will recommend for consideration, consideration by the people and by the parliament through the cabinet. So the input of the people will be vital and all voices will be heard in the process. Some have been wondering, how is it that they haven't heard anything yet? What is happening? I've even seen calls for the record of the committee. Well, we are taking record and we will ensure that the records are available in, in due course. But right now, we are deliberating to arrive at consensus to put recommendations forward um, for consideration by the wider public. I'm pleased to tell you that we have arrived at consensus on some matters so far, and we are near consensus on other matters, but we're working through. A big part of what we're hoping to achieve is to Jamaicanize the Constitution. And this is a term that was coined by our local constitutional law expert, Dr. Barnett. And simply what it means in, the, in this constitutional reform process is to have the constitutional instrument passed by the Parliament of Jamaica, simply. There are other things that will come into it, but if you hear us say that one of our goals is to Jamaicanize the Constitution, what we're saying is that at the end of the day, it's to have a constitution passed by the Parliament of Jamaica because the constitution that we now have was actually um, passed by executive action at Buckingham Palace. So that's an important change that will take place. We, the committee has arrived at consensus for recommendation, the abolition of the constitutional monarchy. I think this is a non-controversial one. Um, this is a major issue that has been out there with the passing of Queen Elizabeth and the um, accession soon to be of, well, accession soon to be coronation of King Charles. We're saying that we will be abolishing the constitutional monarchy as our form of government and we will be removing the British monarch from our government. When that is done, it's to be replaced by a formal head of state for the Republic of Jamaica, a president. So let me state that again. 
once we have abolished the monarchy from our makeup, the makeup of our form of government, will be replaced by the office of president of the Republic of Jamaica. And the president of the Republic of Jamaica is to be a separate office from the head, a pause, the president of the Republic of Jamaica will be the formal head of state of the Republic of Jamaica, separate from the head of government of the Republic of Jamaica, president and prime minister. President as head of state, prime minister as head of government. We have also arrived at consensus on um, how a foreign country should be defined. And simply, any country other than Jamaica will be a foreign country. And the committee is of the view that with this reform, we will take out of the constitution any reference to the Commonwealth. And any privilege to be attached to or relationship to the Commonwealth will be done in ordinary legislation and not a part of our constitution. Major, major change, major, major break. All right, we have also deliberated on the process by which the president is to be selected, what we call presidential selection. And the consensus is that it would be on the nomination of the prime minister after consultation with the leader of the opposition to be confirmed in the parliament. So it's a nomination process and a confirmation process in the parliament. And I think for the first time we will it is our intention to legislate that the two houses will sit together to make this determination on a special vote. Issue of who qualifies to sit in the parliament is one that we have discussed. And I think the people are not privy at this time to see the discussion, but be assured, ladies and gentlemen, that practically every view has been represented at the table. And it begins with a recognition that Jamaicans are part of the global community. We have Jamaicans not only here in Jamaica, but also in the rest of the world. And all Jamaicans um, are passionate about Jamaica. The passion shows itself in one form or the other. And it is our intention to utilize all Jamaicans in making a contribution to the nation. So you have to be a citizen of Jamaica. One of the questions that has been asked is what about Jamaicans who hold other citizenship? We will tell you in details what, or what we will be putting forward to the public on, on this matter. But interesting views ha are at the table, recognizing that Jamaicans are passionate about a Jamaica. And a uh, part of our Jamaicanness is that we go to other places and you know, for circumstances we may take on other nationalities. But once you're a Jamaican, loyal to Jamaica, be prepared to serve in Jamaica, we're going to work out the rules to enable all Jamaicans to make the contribution um, for a better Jamaica. Um, I will pause there because we will give you a full list of other matters. I am going to invite Mr. Anthony Hilton, Member of Parliament um, from the parliamentary opposition to bring a few remarks and to share the parliamentary opposition's perspective on how the work has been progressing so far. Anthony? Thank you, Minister. Um, pleased to be here and to give the parliamentary's opposition, parliamentary opposition's view on proceedings so far. Firstly, to say that the parliamentary opposition comes to this process very clear that it has a very important role to play in this very historic, very momentous um, process. The, the procedure in the committee is one that um, has allowed for um, wide discussion, inputs, and as has been said by the minister, and I confirm that decisions are taken on a consensus basis. 
this has allowed for robust discussion and agreement on some very important issues. The matter of Jamaicanizing the Constitution is one that we fully, fully support. The, we have started a process of decolonizing the Constitution and the opposition strongly and fully supports the decolonization process and it is a process. So we've taken significant decision on the decolonization process. There's more to come. So on the whole, I think it has been a good um, framework for discussions. We are anxious, like you are, that this work and the body of work that is being done within the committee is shared with the public for their education, for their understanding, and for the, the discussions that continue to take place, the vibrant discussion that continues to take place in the public space. We will continue to listen, um, but at this point in time, we have the immediate task of dealing with um, some of the very technical issues and also to bring our, our perspectives on some of the other vitally important issues as this process goes forward. So I can affirm that the process has been robust. It has been consensual. We have been able to make some decisions and the opposition remain very much engaged and involved in this very important and historic process. Thank you. Thank you, Anthony. Dr. Barnett, may I invite you? L ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Lloyd Barnett is our national constitutional law expert. And uh, he, we're, we're privileged to have his contribution to the committee. And we tease him behind the scene that we really want to get the work done while he is still upstanding. And I know it is something that he's also eagerly looking forward to, Dr. Barnett. Greetings and thank you. This is our joint effort. You and me and every other Jamaican must be involved in this process because it is a stage at which we now have a clear opportunity to assert our existence as a people and as a nation and to claim Jamaica as our own and our constitution as one made by us in Jamaica and approved by the Jamaican people. This is not symbolic. It is an expression of our well-being and our sense of nationhood and our pride in our history and the struggles we have made to achieve independence and nationhood. And so I appeal to you to be engaged in the process, in the public education about it, in the continued discussion of the various questions which arise because the Constitution is quite complex. When you decide that you want to change from a monarchical system to a republican system, that decision doesn't end there. There are lots of subsidiary questions which arise and which have to be answered and dealt with. And so that the committee is determined to engage the public, the people of Jamaica, in this process and to ensure that whatever we achieve is an achievement by all of us. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Barnett. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the Jamaica umbrella group of churches represented in the president, Dr. Elena McCarthy. I will invite her to make a brief comment.
Thank you so much, Minister, and uh, good afternoon, everyone. Indeed, it's a pleasure that the church's voice is also being incorporated in this very, very important juncture of our history. And I can assure you that as a church body, we are listening to the various questions and queries that's coming up and we have been having meetings and trying to do some clarification on the matters. I just want to also say that as a church group, we are here to voice the concerns of the people and to ensure that whatever happens at the end of the day is reflective of our church grouping. I'd also like to say that based on what I have observed since I've been on the committee, that no one voice can make the final decision. As was mentioned, um, it's a robust discussion that goes on with each topic or issue that's presented on the table and everybody gets a place to state their views at the end of it all a summary is done and a consensus is reached by everyone and so with this kind of process in place i am sure that at the end of the day we will be able to achieve our goals and so i just want for the church community to continue in prayer for this group at this time because we can only trust and depend on God to help us to really come out with the right decision at the end of the day, which is not just going to impact us who are present here, but the generations to come. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. McCarthy. Um, I will invite um, Mrs. Lolita davis Mattis, who wears many hats, but from the wider society to bring you her remarks. Well, thank you, Minister, and I'll be, I'll be very brief. I just want to say that this is the moment that we have been waiting for. This is the moment that our ancestors fought for. This is the moment that all Jamaicans need to rally. We talk about, we, there's a time we talked about rallying around the particular colors. This is the time for Jamaicans really to rally around the call and to, for us to move from the monarchical system to a republican system. We have spoken to the role of the committee. We have been talking about the robust discussions and the fact that despite the, the notion that the committee is comprised of attorneys mostly, that the, that the views of the people are represented to this point. But Minister, I just want to say that I think the most important element of the work is what we are now indicating to the public that we have reached consensus on and that this will now generate the kind of discussion that we want to have generated in the media, in the public, and that will also come back to us for us to further deliberate on. I am very grateful to be a part of this committee, and I just want to assure Jamaicans that we are looking out to Jamaicans, we are looking at our cultural heritage, we are looking at all the matters that must impact an instrument that will form the bedrock of the legislative framework of this country. Thank you. Thank you, Lolita, honoring our cultural heritage, looking out for people. The voice of the young people are being heard. I'm going to invite C.J. Bodrell to bring brief remarks. Thank you, Minister. As a youth involved in the Constitutional Reform Committee, I am excited about the future for our country. It is crucial that young people are involved in this process and so I'm glad that my inclusion is here. Our committee recognizes the importance of engaging other young people in this constitutional reform process, which is why we're planning to have youth forums and engage with student organizations at both the university level and in the high schools. One of the strategies as well is to actually involve the youth on the subcommittees of the constitutional reform committee. We hope to create a space where young people can have a meaningful dialogue about the issues that affect them, as well as to offer their own perspectives on the proposed changes within the Constitution. On Monday, we'll be having our first engagement with the National Youth Council Executive, and Minister will be joining me for that. We believe that by proactively engaging youth, that we can ensure that the upcoming cultural reform serves the best interests of all citizens, including the younger generation. 
And I'd like to say as well that I'm pleased about the approach that has been taken from a consensus-driven approach and the fact that there is seemingly a non-partisan view to our move forward as a democracy. Thank you. Thank you, Sajay. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're open to your question. Bear in mind that we're relying on the media to help focus the nation's attention on the important work being done. Focus is critical. So we'll take your questions. Name and media house. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Maya Chung, and I'm with Public Broadcasting Corporation of Jamaica. The matters um, that have been discussed here are very exciting, very long overdue. It's excellent to see everybody cooperating. It's esoteric. So, um, and as the representative for the, sh the church indicated, we're talking about generations. The import of uh, public education so that the consensus can hit in a real place within each of us, but this is a big deal. Um, public education, what is going to be happening in there? Because there are levels. Everybody's not going to grasp uh, legalese and so on, but they understand the overarching uh, you know, tenets that we're trying to put forward. How are we going to be seeing this roll out? And it seems to me it might take a decent while, but I think the time should be invested because this is too important. Thank you, Mario. Thank you. What I hear you asking, well, acknowledging that the public will have to be educated, of course, because at the end of the day, the ultimate vote on whether the law is comes into being will be the people's. And... We are preparing the recommendations and the reason for the recommendations uh, to go to the people. But this press conference is one of the examples of the engagement with the public. To just let you know where we are, um, we have a public engagement and communication subcommittee that is working mm -hmm. on um, an entire package around the engagement and in due course we will let you know suffice it to say we will be operating in all fora um, using new media face-to-face -face engagements going into the schools um, we're in the process of organizing it to ensure that it is as effective as possible but we will also be going to the streets in the nooks and crannies everyone is going to be an important voice what is going to be critical is that the information being conveyed is accurate and so at the end of the day because the people will have to know what is in the bill that they will be approving so yes it's it's a, the the technical constitutional work important as it is and it has to precede the engagement. It has to be informed by the people's views also. It's going to be how we get people to understand the importance of this. And it is truly my hope that the media as a critical partner will help to focus the nation's attention on that part of the work so that they know exactly what they will be voting for at the end of the day. Good afternoon, Kelly Shaw Williams, Television Jamaica. Mrs. Malahufort, are you stating unequivocally that no one will be added or removed from the committee given the concerns in the public? Because I don't think we can ignore the concerns, um, especially in regards to Professor Albert. Thank you. Well, I did announce that we had an addition to the committee um, since the start. Uh, Dr. Elaine McCarty, who is president of the Jamaica Umbrella Group of Churches, there is a process by which committee is named. Um, the concerns that have been raised are noted. Concerns are noted. I, I just want to assure Jamaicans that the work is being done in the best interest of the nation. And sometimes someone said to me, Minister, it looks like Jamaicans want a committee of everybody <laughs> because depending on who you speak with, if they are included or if their group is included, they are all right. Um, 
we can't have everybody on the committee, but we'll certainly hear from everyone. Everyone who's on the committee has a role on the committee and is representing a group, government, opposition, parliamentary opposition, um, or experts, or faith-based community, or wider community, the youth voice. We could have expanded it widely, but we have to have a mechanism that's workable. What is important is that after the committee has deliberated, the people will have their say. And even while we are deliberating, we're listening very closely to the concerns of the people and ensuring that the perspectives are reflected at the table. And I know that you must be interested in ensuring that we have the best advice and the best oversight. Not a perfect system, but we're trying for quality. And I'm relying on the media to be a constructive voice to help to focus the nation's attention on what is important. We are going to be actualizing our Jamaicanness. We're going to say goodbye to the British Empire and to the monarch. I invite the media to focus attention in that direction. Short question, Mayo. Yes. Uh, reintroduction, PBC J. Mayo Chung. Uh, we spoke about the Jamaicanizing for us, by us. I like that. Uh, the Commonwealth issues. It, I'm on a tenuous escape because you don't know if it's too early to ask these kind of questions, but you're looking at. Uh, constitutionally uh, repurposing how we manifest as Commonwealth partners. Are you able to make any comments on those, uh, even two or three? Because when the media helps you, we mm -hmm. can put these things out there and people uh, they make them graspable mm -hmm. in order that persons can start to cogitate and then the man in the, in the community. But when you use the big word cogitate, who you think will understand you? And we're talking about simplifying the thing. <laughs> I, I blame my great education in Jamaica. You know what? I'm going to call on Dr. Barnett. He, he had put it so well about the um, historical relic of the Commonwealth. Dr. Barnett, may I invite you to prov provide a little cogitation for Maya on this issue? I think you're being provocative, you know. <laughs> Because when you think about the Commonwealth, I think about colonial history and the fact that we now have the third charge as our king. The first one was king before Jamaica was captured by the English, but he was executed. And he was executed because he had trampled on people's rights. And the second charge who came shortly after we joined the English Empire, was very involved in the slave trade. So that two or three years ago, I wrote a letter to the press pointing out that we were in danger of having the third charge. Now, we have the opportunity to rescue ourselves. And we are seeking your assistance in that rescue mission. I think we have reached a stage as Jamaicans where it is no longer appropriate that we should be bowing to or genuflecting to a throne at Buckingham Palace. And when sometimes I read the story about what is happening within that royal family. I wonder how Jamaicans, especially the faith-based Jamaicans, think it is appropriate that we should be governed by, even ceremonially, by somebody from that royal family, so that the process of education and the process of 
decolonization is one in which we all have to be engaged. The Commonwealth itself is a combination of sovereign states in which we become members and remain a member only because we choose to, not because it is imposed on us. But within the Commonwealth, in my view, our most important association is the CARICOM Association because we all suffered from the same slavery and colonial history and have the same problems to overcome and can help our, each other by cooperating and fighting for sovereignty, independence, and our freedom from the shackles of the past. We're focusing on our Jamaicanness. We're focusing on our self-determination. It's really not so much about other people right now. It's about putting Jamaica first. Ladies and gentlemen, unless there is any other question, I want to thank you, and I hope you have found this update useful. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I would just like to reiterate that we want to hear from you here at the Ministry of Legal and Constitutional Affairs. Please send us your thoughts via constitutionalreform at mlca.gov.jm. So on behalf of the entire team at the Ministry of Legal and Constitutional Affairs, I'm Roxy Nicol wishing you all a wonderful afternoon. Thank you. <laughs>